The first day Dr. Helen noticed the door, she was intrigued more than anything. It was a strange old wooden entry hidden in an obscure corner of the research facility under layers of dust and paint next to a rusty gurney. She pushed it open to reveal a room that hadn't been disturbed for decades, an archaic operating theater, the kind one might see in a medical museum. The room drew her in. Its secrets whispered to her from their yellowing tiles and antiquated tools. When night fell and the facility was drenched in silence, she found herself standing before it again. She could almost see the shadows of past surgeons, hear the murmurs of forgotten operations echoing off the walls. Dreams began to invade her nights, dreams filled with scenes of surgery within the room. The patients were faceless, their identities obscured in the sterility of the theater. She saw herself moving with a precision that was both surreal and chilling, using the archaic instruments with ease. The dreams felt like memories, like echoes of a life she had never lived. In the light of day, the echo of the dreams began to influence her work. Dr. Helen found herself proposing experimental techniques, methods whispered to her in her dreams. The staff members exchanged concerned glances, disturbed by her sudden obsession with this forgotten room and her radical theories. But they couldn't deny the logic in her arguments. The subtly warped reality came to a head one day when an accident in the labs left a technician critically injured, his life hanging on by a precarious thread. The nearest hospital was miles away, the weather too rough for an airlift. Dr. Helen stepped forward, her eyes flickering to the hidden room, laying out the archaic tools, sterilizing them as best she could. She prepared the old operating theater for a procedure that hadn't been performed there for decades. The other staff watched in stunned silence as she began the operation, her hands steady, her face an unreadable mask of determination and desperation. Each incision Every suture was a dance of savagery and science. The staff watched, horrified and fascinated, as she maneuvered through the operation with a grace that belied the ancient tools in her hands. The room was filled with an air of otherworldly intent, the stark light casting long, menacing shadows on the walls. Somehow, against all odds, the technician survived. He woke up, disoriented and frightened, but alive. Things at the facility, however, felt different as though they had crossed a line from which there was no return. Dr. Helen's obsession had saved a life, but at what cost? In the days that followed, Helen was distant, almost spectral. She moved through the facility like a phantom, her eyes always drawn to the door. Her colleagues watched her, a mix of fear and concern clouding their faces. They dared not question her, their minds still reeling from the spectacle they had witnessed. Then one day, Dr. Helen was gone. Her colleagues searched the facility, but there was no sign of her. The door was just a door again, the operating room behind it just an abandoned relic of the past. They felt her absence like a cold, unsettling breeze, a shadow hanging over their work. The door remained closed after that day. The staff avoided the corner where it stood, shrouded in an air of eerie silence. They spoke in hushed whispers about Dr. Helen, her strange ideas and the horrifying operation. They wondered if they had witnessed a miracle or a monstrous obsession. In the end, they were left with a revolutionary research path, a memory of a horrific night, and the echo of a woman who had once been their colleague. They found themselves questioning if the door was an ordinary door, or if it had been a doorway to something far more sinister. The wooden door stood there, silent and menacing, an enigma that no one dared to unravel. As each day passed, the memory of Dr. Helen began to fade into a ghostly echo. All that was left was an unsettling sense of something unfinished, a whisper of horror in the halls. The door remained an ordinary door in an ordinary facility, hiding its sinister secrets behind an unremarkable facade. 
The quiet horror lay not in the door itself, but in the memory of what had once been, and in the unanswered question, what happened to Dr. Helen?